All right, I think we're at critical mass here. We can go ahead and get the webinar started. My name is Kyle Robler. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Blue Cat, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the first in our series of cloud webinars. Uh, this first one will cover the topic of regaining control of DDI to accelerate the delivery of critical DNS services to cloud teams. We hope to see you again on February 23rd, where we will discuss taming complex DNS forwarding in the cloud using Blue Cat Intelligent Forwarding. And then we'll hope that you join us again on March 23rd where we will give you a sneak peek into Blue Cat Integrity 9.3. Integrity is our core DDI platform. 9.3 is the next major release, so we hope to give you an insider look at that time. So again, the first in our series today is regaining control of DDI. When we talk to our customers, we're hearing that a lot of network teams are struggling to keep up with their cloud and DevOps teams as they rapidly deploy applications and services into the cloud. I'm joined by Scott Penny. He's our vice, vice president of strategy here at Blue Cat. Hi, Scott. Welcome aboard. Hey, thanks, Kyle. Glad to be here. Thanks, everybody, for uh, for attending. You are looking pretty sharp today, Scott. I can tell by your outfit you are uh, ready to regain control of DDI in the cloud today. You know, this is this is my cloud webinar shirt. So I, I will never do a cloud <laughs> webinar without wearing this shirt and this vest. It's just it makes me feel good and cloudy, I guess. Or something. <laughs> Great. So for the second and third in February and March, I expect the same outfit. Good, good. Do my well, best. Before we, before we dive in, let's cover two housekeeping items. Uh, the first is if people have questions as we move along, uh, you'll notice in your GoToWebinar navigation pane, there's a questions drop down. Go ahead and put your questions in there. We'll cover them in a Q&A session towards the end of the call. And then second, if you happen to be a member of our network VIP uh, community in Slack, Feel free to Slack us your questions at the general channel there. We'll also monitor that and bring them in uh, as needed. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, Scott, would you mind walking us through what we're going to be covering today? Yeah, sure. So at, at a really high level, this is this are the topics we're going to cover. So we're going to start with a very brief sort of high level, you know, just chat about uh, you know cloud direction and how that's impacting you know data centers and traditional DDI administrators and things like that. Uh, then we'll we'll talk specifically about the four challenges that we get a lot from our customers around cloud. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about, you know, how that's impacting, you know, day-to-day -day life for, for our customers and, and talk about how we can solve those. Then we'll actually solve those challenges. So we're going to do a, a real-time kind of live demo here of, of deploying infrastructure and doing some other cool stuff uh, just so everybody can see how it actually works uh, in our products and in the cloud. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have some time at the end to, uh, to do a little bit of Q&A and uh, make sure we answer anybody's questions. So uh, that, that's kind of what's on the on the tap for today. So I guess without uh, without any further preamble, why don't we uh, why don't we go ahead and dig into the details? All right. So one of the things that's become very clear these days as we talk to our customers is that no matter what your opinion of cloud, organizations are rapidly moving resources from traditional data centers into cloud. And, and you can go out to Google, you know, whatever whatever source of information you want to, to find some statistics. This one happens to be from Flexera. It talks about, you know, where people are going with regard to the number of data centers that they have. And, and it's very clear if you read these numbers that our customers intend to either uh, significantly or somewhat reduce the number of data centers that they're investing in going forward. And if you think about what that means for somebody in a DDI type of role, that means that all of the things that used to be you know, resident in those data centers, your DNS servers, your IPAM, um, those things are probably going to start moving to the cloud as well. And so with this inevitable change, you know, people start to feel, you know, a little bit uncertain about, you know, what's going to happen, right? So, um, you know, as things move out of the data center, am I still going to have visibility to them? Am I still going to be able to, you know, sort of put my controls in place around what's going on there? Um, these become really big questions for, you know, DNS professionals. That, that they really do need to answer. Uh, and, and of course, if you don't have the answers to those, your anxiety sort of you know, comes to a higher and higher level all the time uh, because you, you really just don't know where you are in this, in this migration. But you know, there are tons of benefits to going to cloud that go along with some of these challenges that people see. And, and these are you know, four critical challenges that, that customers share with us all the time about you know, what's happening when, when things do move up to cloud. But again, before, before we jump into that, we should probably talk about the benefits, right? The reason why people are going to cloud 
is because it gives organizations a tremendous amount of agility, flexibility. Um, it, it lets them do things a lot faster than they have been able to do in, in a traditional data center environment. So I want to, I wanna, before I get into the challenges, I want to sort of show you an example of that. Um, you know, one of one of the beauty, beautiful things of cloud is instead of going through you know massive change processes and acquiring hardware and having to rack and stack and cable and power that hardware, um, I can actually deploy infrastructure at will uh, at any time via code. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna deploy some infrastructure here, some Blue Cat infrastructure that we're gonna use in the later part of the webinar. It's gonna take not very long to deploy, but let me uh, let me go ahead and kick that off here. And I'm going to be using a tool called Terraform to do this. And if you go to our Blue Cat Labs website, which we'll provide a link for, uh, you'll be able to download this example code that I'm using. But basically, I'm just going to run a Terraform command here to deploy a Blue Cat address manager, a Blue Cat DNS DHCP server, a gateway server, and a test client up into an Amazon environment. So let me kick that off. All right. So now, well, while that's going, let's uh, let's talk about some of these challenges. So um, the first challenge is really around this idea of visibility and control. So as things start to shift to the cloud. And as you know, DevOps teams or, or whoever start getting the ability to deploy infrastructure rapidly, a lot of times the, the DDI team starts to lose visibility into what's actually being deployed. And, and of course, that can, that can cause a number of issues, right? So if, if people are deploying networks and infrastructure, uh, signing IP addresses, updating DNS records, maybe overriding DNS records in the cloud, that has impact to the people who are, who are you know, working with those tools, and, and that could cause conflicts with, you know, things in my data center, things in other clouds, uh, and so it's really hard for DDI teams to to really maintain visibility into what's going on. And at the same time, if if I'm deploying DNS out in Amazon or Azure, and somebody else is managing that, I, I've lost control over that. So I don't really know how that configuration is being done. And if somebody maybe makes forwarding rule changes that, that conflict with something I've done in my data center. I might actually cause an outage, and and that can have you know pretty massive impacts on everybody. the The third thing we hear a lot is that teams just just frankly feel left in the dust, right? As as infrastructure starts to become more fluid, um, either the tickets are going to pile up, and I'm going to have to do you know a Herculean effort to keep up with all the changes and make all the manual adjustments, um, or I'm going to kind of get left behind, right? People are going to orchestrate everything outside of of you know this 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 nice, stable, consistent DDI platform that I've spent a long time putting in place. So I need to be able to move as fast as the cloud teams if I'm going to sort of keep my place in this, in this environment. And then the final thing we hear a lot, and I mentioned it a little bit before, is as we start to fragment out DNS and have little bits of it here and there and in this cloud and that cloud, um, I need to still make sure that my clients have a way to you know, route through that. You know, I need to be able to get to some resource in the cloud or in this data center or in this remote office. And, and a lot of times, just because of the way DNS works, that becomes really, really hard. And I start to end up with this tangle of conditional forwarding rules and, and things like that to make sure that my clients can actually connect to things. And of course, anytime you add in those sorts of complexities, um, you have that risk of outages again, or, or at least clients not being able to get to what they need. So let's talk about these a little bit. Um, you know, we talked about this lack of visibility. You know, I've got data centers and, and campus offices, and I've got you know now cloud data centers in Amazon and Azure. Um, when things get pushed out there, I still need to know what's going on, right? So, so Blue Cat offers a solution that we're going to look at a little bit later called you know, cloud discovery and visibility, which allows you to actually connect to those cloud services and watch for changes in DNS configuration or network configuration there and pull that information back into your address manager. So you'll have a you know, up-to-date sort of real-time monitored view of what's going on in all those clouds so that you can make better decisions about how you're going to configure things or how you're going to allocate resources. So that's, that's really the solution to this idea of you know, getting visibility into what's going on, um, which, which maybe now somewhere else or somebody else is taking care of that. The second thing that we're going to talk about and we're going to show today is this idea of control, right? And, and as, as DNS goes out to these clouds, right, I, I've got my on-premises data center stuff. Um, really what I want to do is I want to be able to extend what I've been doing for a long time out into those clouds so that I can not just get visibility, but also take control of what's going on in those things. So being able to deploy things like address manager, or DNS servers out in the cloud and actually have my DNS data, my zone data out there uh, so that I can still manage it from a central location 
is, is really critical to my access. So we're going to show you how we deploy services out there and, and, and deploy zone resource records and, and things of that nature out there. The next challenge that we talked about was, you know, this ability to automate and orchestrate rapid changes. And we've already really kind of covered this one when I showed you, you know, sort of how to deploy infrastructure with Terraform. Um, but it's important to note that, you know, deploying infrastructure and then getting visibility into changes sort of goes hand in hand because you don't just deploy Blue Cat infrastructure with Terraform. Um, your DevOps team, your Cloud Ops team, whoever it is, they're deploying all kinds of stuff with things like Terraform or other orchestration tools. Um, so the more you automate, the more that visibility really becomes important. And what we'll show you during the, the rest of the webinar here is if somebody makes changes, you know, sort of how that trickles down uh, into address managers so that you have this real-time view. Uh, so we'll touch on that again during the demo. And then the final problem is, is as I talked about, this like tangle of, of DNS forwarding rules that need to happen to be able to connect all of these different instances of DNS. So if you think about a little bit of DNS in Azure and Google Cloud Platform and Amazon, uh, some in your data center remote branch, you know, sort of how do you make sure that your clients can intelligently route through that, that, that nest of DNS and find the right resources? Uh, so we're actually not going to go into detail on this one today. Uh, so if you join us for our next webinar on February 23rd, we're actually going to do more of a more of a specific discussion and demonstration around how we can do intelligent DNS forwarding uh, to make sure all this stuff stays connected. All right, so the challenges, right? Visibility, control, speed, simplicity. Those are those are really the the challenges that people have, and and the 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 things that we're going to go into and, and sort of show in in real life here uh, in just a second how we overcome those at Blue Cat. All right, so let's uh, switch over to the desktop here and, and actually see how this all really works. Uh, so here is the, the window from the Terraform script that I ran. And as you can see at the very end of the script, what Terraform has done here for me is it's you know, spit out a bunch of information about the environment that I'm gonna be working on. So down here in my terminal window, you see that I've got a, a BAM with a public IP that we're gonna access. I've got a BDDS with a public IP and a, and a gateway server uh, that we're gonna be using here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into cloud discovery and visibility. So to do that, I'm actually going to have to go into BAM and, and set up some uh, set up a user and, and some user defined fields to be able to get Gateway to work. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, go up here, head to my BAM. And again, this infrastructure has all been freshly built up in, uh, in AWS. So uh, nothing's been configured to this point. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that, grab the Password here, get logged in. And the first thing we have to do is we have to go over here and create a new object type. And it is a named user. Add one. I'm going to call this Blue Cat Gateway. And this user defined field basically is, is how we give permission to things within Gateway, so workflows within Gateway. So we have to create this user defined field here. Just add that. And then we go back in and we actually create a user for Gateway. Go in here, create a user. We call this user Gateway. Give it a password that I can actually remember. Give it a uh, email address, because that's required. We're going to make this user an administrator. And I have to be sure to give both GUI and API access, because all of the gateway workflows are going to be using our BAM API. So I got to make sure I've got the right access type here. And then down here in my user defined field, I'm going to just add this to all. So when I create permissions for my workflows, I'm going to I'm going to add those workflows to all so that this user has access. So go ahead and add that. Get LastPass to stop popping up. Uh, all right, so we've got our BAM configured. So now let's go over to Gateway. So grab my public IP from my Gateway. And here I'm going to log in using that user I just created. I remember the password. I did. All right, so now we're in Gateway. Uh, so now what we're going to do, uh, just verify here that I've got myself pointed to the correct BAM, so 10.10.1.20, that's the one I'm, I just deployed, right? You can see it right here, 10.10.1.20. Uh, I'm going to go into administration, and workflow permissions. Here's my workflow that I've deployed using my Terraform script, so I manually, or I automatically uh, push this workflow up. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and give it 
access to anybody that's got all there. And as you can see over here, that now appeared. So that means my user now has access to this. So here we go. Here's our discovery and visibility workflow for AWS. We have same thing for Azure, same thing for Google Cloud Platform. I'm just playing in AWS today. So to configure this workflow, now this workflow, just to, to summarize, is, is going to be going out to my Amazon environment, um, looking at the simple queue service within that AWS platform, and it's going to be monitoring for changes. So it's going to do discovery. It's going to pull in all of the information we tell it to, and then it's going to continuously pull for, for changes. And we'll see how that works here in a little bit. So uh, to configure it, I need to give it my AWS access key, and I need to go grab my secret access key. Uh, I'm not using MFA in this environment, but if you're using MFA, you'd be able to put it in there. Go here and do configuration. Uh, so by default here, I'm doing everything in AWS US East 2, uh, which is going to create a configuration in BAM called US East 2 as well. I could override those if I wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it default for today. Go down to discovery options. Here's where I tell the workflow what I want to actually discover. So I'm actually going to discover all this stuff. Why not? Bring everything in. So EC2, Route 53, DNS, anything. Uh, and then it wants to know where I'm going to shove this. So I'm going to create a zone called team1.com in my BAM, where all of this information is going to get uh, pulled. And then we'll actually be deploying that zone later. Go here in visibility. I'm going to enable visibility. And I'm going to update DNS. This update DNS one's important, because what this means is if I see anything change in Amazon, I'm actually going to redeploy, do a selective deploy of that information to my BDDS that I'm deploying. Right. So everything is going to actually stay in sync. Here I've got my gateway and my password for the API user. Uh, paste that in again and use this one for my service account key. And here, this is not a standard part of this workflow. So this is this is actually for this custom version that we use for demos. Uh, so I'm just going to basically tell it which SQS uh, in Amazon to use. So this is one I created using the Terraform. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead and hit Start Discovery. And you'll see up here at the top, it's going to tell you what it's doing. So it's discovering public blocks for US East 2, VPC, subnets, EC2 instances, elastic load balancers. So that's kicked off. And then we'll see up here at the top, it says visibility started. So what that means is the workflow has now done its initial discovery, and now it's actually polling continuously for, uh, for information. All right, so let's see what happens here. So let's go back to the address manager and let's refresh this page. And notice a couple things. Uh, first, we have a configuration up here, US East 2, that's been created. And now if I go over to my devices, just as a way to quickly test, we can see that here are the things that I have deployed out in Amazon with my Terraform script. So um, this is the information that was initially pulled in uh, by Cloud Discovery and Visibility. So before we go on, I'm going to customize this view a little bit here. And I'm going to add in a name tag. Uh, let's put in public and uh, let's put in instant state and private root instant state. And let's do public DNS name. Why not? And do update. So here as you can see, I've pulled in some additional information. So here are the name tags that I defined for these servers. And here's the DNS public name. Now that's on the devices. If I go into my DNS here, and if I drill down here into Amazon DNS external, com, here's team1.com. So again, here's the zone that I configured in the workflow. And here are all my resource records related to this. So you can actually compare these over here. Uh, 134, for example, look over here. And sure enough, that's the BAM public IP that was defined. Right. So here's all of my stuff. OK, so that was just step one. That's me pulling information in. But the cool part about this is it actually is updated in real time. So if I open up another window here and I log in to this environment, which I probably should have done ahead of time, logged in. So here's the AWS dashboard for this. If I go to my running instances, there are those servers. The neat thing about discovery and visibility is if I take one of these, like this test client, and I stop it, I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. Yes, and if I go back over here to Gateway, notice this info message here, EC2 change. And 
so it detected that I shut that down. So if I go back over here and I go over to devices, see how these all say running, 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 running. Let's refresh this a couple times. And look, it changed to stopped. So BAM is aware of the state of that thing. And now if I go back over to DNS, aha, it disappeared because I did a dynamic update of this. All right, so I'm gonna restart that thing just so it shows back up and we can use it later. But you can see that this is all working. We've got discovery and visibility running, it's polling for changes, it's finding updates, and it's updating our IPAM and our DNS. All right, so that's, uh, that's cloud discovery and visibility. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna take this one step further. Let me refresh this one more time. There's our test client again, it's back up and running. Uh, so what I wanna do now is I actually wanna go and deploy this zone that I've, I've updated here to that BDDS that I deployed up in the cloud. So now I want to extend control of DNS uh, out into Amazon. So I'm gonna go here to my service tab, I'm gonna add a server. Uh, I'm going to call it BDDS because why not? Uh, let's see, 10.1.10.10.1.30. Yep, that's what I've got here. So that's what I'm deploying to. I'm just going to call it BDDS. I am going to put in my default password. Let's go down here and detect the server settings. Ooh, it worked. All right, so it found that server that I had deployed via Terraform. I'm just going to go ahead and add that server. All right, there we go. It's not asking me to add things. Uh, all right, so we've got our BDDS, it's out there. Now let's go back to our DNS. Here we're in team1.com. So let's put in a deployment role. So let's add a deployment role. Master, select that BDDS, add that one. And we'll go ahead and add that. So we've got our deployment role. Go up here. Select our server, and let's go ahead and deploy that zone to the server. All right, there we go. Okay, so what have we done here? Just to summarize. So we discovered all of this DNS data, right? And we found and we created these resource records. We're monitoring for these changes. So, you know, this the gateway workflow is constantly going out, looking at the queue, seeing if anything's changes, you know, add, stop, deleted, whatever. Uh, all of that is getting reflected into this zone. We've then taken this zone information, we've deployed it out to a BDDS that we deployed in Amazon. So now we have a server out there that can act as the authority for this information. So, um, and that authority is going to be updated every time there's a change. So let's do a little bit of testing. So let me open up another terminal here and let's dig at this BDDS. Team one, there we go. All right, so we do a dig and look, we get a no error and we get an answer. We get the answer for the public IP of this client. Uh, now keep in mind for purposes of this demo, I'm, I'm using public IPs, uh, it works equally well with internal IPs. Uh, it just depends on how you're doing your discovery and how you have things configured. Um, but anyway, I get a response here, uh, no error for this test one client. And again, let's let's just see what happens when I shut that thing down again. So if I go back in here, get this guy, let's stop him again. Yeah, stop him. Again, go here to AWS. Yep, we see that the thing changed. Go back here to our devices. Wait until this thing gets uh, change to stopped in BAM. And there, it disappeared. First it stops, then it disappears. Depends on when you hit refresh. Uh, so it's gone from our devices list. If we go over here to our DNS, it's gone. Okay, and then remember, we check that, you know, deploy changes. So this would then do a selective deployment to our BDDS. So if we go back over here to our environment and we do that same dig again, next domain records gone so aws administrator stopped the instance gateway saw that change gateway updated bam with the current status of that device the dns record because that device was stopped the dns record got removed 
And so anybody who is hitting that BDDS that we deployed now gets an appropriate response, which is an X domain. That thing is not here anymore. So now we've actually put together cloud discovery and visibility with uh, deploying BDDSs to the clouds. So now I've got an authoritative server in Amazon that's going to have accurate, up-to-date information about everything that's happening in my environment in real time. Pretty cool stuff. That is pretty cool. Fantastic. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for that uh, that demo and that walkthrough. I'm frantically trying to take notes to the whole time. See <laughs> you, can can, ask, you can ask me later. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I can just summarize what uh, we talked about today. So today we regained control of DDI in the cloud. Uh, we deployed Blue Cat infrastructure into an Amazon Web Service environment. We configured Blue Cat cloud discovery and visibility to discover data in AWS and then monitor those changes. And then we took control of Cloud DNS with Blue Cat Address Manager. Uh, and if the attendees are anything like me, trying to take notes and frantically missing step by steps, don't worry. We've actually published an asset called a Blue Cat Blueprint for AWS. And if you see on the right hand side, you'll be able to go through all the steps that Scott went through today. It'll take you through screenshots and step by step. There's a URL there, pretty quick. You can take a screenshot here, you can copy it down 3PICSNR. You'll also get a copy of uh, that link in your registration. Thank you email. So I'll leave that up there a little bit more so you can copy it down 3 PICSNR. All right, Scott, I think you've also had a chance to take a look at the Q&A box. What questions can we answer today? I actually before we jump into the questions, we forgot to mention one thing, which is the uh, the Terraform script that I use there is also posted up on GitHub. If you uh, go to GitHub Dot com and you go to Blue Cat Labs, you'll find some code in there. It's under a repository called Terraform Deploy. Uh, and that's got all of the kind of the framework for, you know, how you can deploy a BAM, a BDDS, a gateway server, or, you know, a bunch of other stuff uh, from Blue Cat up in the cloud. So uh, good resource there. Needs some customization for your environment, but uh, but it does work. So, uh, all right, so questions. Um, there are not any in WebEx at the moment. Uh, Kyle, do you want to check the VIP channel? Yeah, here I think we do have a couple of questions in GoToWebinar. Let's see if I can maximize that window. Uh, he's, this is the question that says, I missed how do you determine team1.com was the zone. Each of our VPCs have different private zones. They may have various public zones as well. How do you know what zone to put a discovered entity in? Yeah, it just kind of depends on how you want to configure things. So um, there, there's a separate configuration mode in there. I, I kind of glossed over it, um, but it, it was around um, uh, you can enable enable per VPC configuration, which will which will create a configuration for each VPC, and then within that VPC you can create those zones appropriately. Um, you know, you can you can put in really whatever you want there. Uh, most of the time, you know, you're gonna pick a zone. Customers will pick a zone for a VPC or something like that, and just say, look, this is you know my I don't know, customer facing production VPC, whatever, and you know, name the zone appropriately. Uh, it's just kind of up to you. You can put in whatever you want. Okay, great. Um, there's another question that says, when will AWS roles be available for the visibility piece? Uh, you know what? That's a good question. Uh, I don't have a date for that, um, but uh, I know we're we're making updates to the CDNV stuff on a pretty regular basis. So uh, we'll, we'll actually have to follow up with the product management team on that one to see when that specifically is getting added. Yeah, I think another related question here is: Is role assumption supported if you're using third-party Vault? Uh, not sure. Actually, again, would have to uh, would have to dig in with the product team. Should have invited the product team. That would have been smart. We'll get them on for the February 23rd call. How about that? There you go. Uh, another question here, is Blue Cat's best practice to keep cloud workloads in its own view or BAM? Or can you merge views on premises and cloud? Um, you can certainly merge them. In fact, I, I would strongly suggest merging the views. Um, you know, one of uh, one of the reasons for using views is because you know you've got overlaps or conflicts or something like that, and so you have to you know sort of dictate how um, this client, you know, the, the DNS data that this client's going to see versus this client, um, and it, it gets problematic to manage. Uh, and actually, uh, wh whoever's asking that question, you should definitely come to the next webinar. Uh, on the 23rd, I believe it is, because that's kind of specifically what we're talking about there. 
um, is, you know, the ability to sort of have overlapping records that, that, you know, might be appropriate based on where, you know, my client is, uh, and that may be different if my client's in the cloud versus on-prem versus a branch office. And we'll be kind of going through a real kind of use case for how you wrote those queries appropriately uh, so that you don't have to have a bunch of views. Good, good. All right, another question here. How does the integrity solution fit? Should an enterprise use AWS private hosted zones? So AWS manages the zone. Yeah, if you're using private hosted zones, um, you know you don't have to have a, a BDDS in the cloud. Of course, you 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 don't have to. Um, the really the the point is well, there's a couple of points. One is uh, a lot of our customers they really want to have um, control, it's very granular, specific control over the DNS authority that's sitting out into a, in a virtual network, and and so deploying a BDDS there makes a heck of a lot of sense in that regard. Um, but not everybody really cares about that, right? So if if you're you know, leveraging private zones, private hosted zones. Um, again, it kind of falls back to that, uh, the last question, which is, you know, how do I just make sure that I can check that hosted zone for appropriate data for my clients that are in the cloud, because it's mostly what that would be useful for. Um, and then also be able to route back to a data center or, or somewhere else to get other information, or, or maybe from Amazon to Azure, or Azure to Google. Uh, so again, that, that next webinar kind of talk through some of those use cases, but you, you could, you could manage your your DNS, your resource records, up in private zones, um, and and simply make BAM aware of them, right? Just make integrity aware of them. Whether you choose to deploy those or not, it's just kind of up to you. Depends on the problem you're trying to solve. Good. Another question: How do you handle multiple AWS accounts? Would they have different keys? Yes, they would. Uh, so this is actually, and I think this one's out in the most recent, uh, the most recent version of Cloud Discovery and Visibility. It's a, a slightly different version than the one that I'm using in the demo here. Uh, so I believe you can uh, put in multiple accounts in that one. So if if not, uh, ping me directly. I think we're going to put contact uh, information out there, and I can I can get you the right version. But that's a very common a very common issue uh, we found is you know you've got hundreds of accounts and you know different credentials. Good. I think you answered this earlier, but do we have an ETA on Google? Uh, yeah, Google is out. Um, so we, we actually do have Cloud Discovery and Visibility. We just released it, uh, I want to say it was just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so that is out. So we have Azure, we have Amazon, we have Google Cloud Platform. Uh, if anybody's got another one, uh, we, we hear Oracle once in a while. Um, you know, put, definitely put those requests in through your account team and, and we'll take them under consideration. Okay. Great. Well, I think that concludes the questions. Um, if there are no more, I don't see any in the general uh, channel on Slack either. So I just want to remind everybody that we've got the second and third in our series coming up February 23rd and March 23rd. So be sure and join us for those. If you've already registered, don't worry. You don't need to click anything else. You'll get reminders in your email uh, right before those events. Uh, if you happen to be a Blue Cat customer, I uh, also want to inform you that on February 9th, we've got a hands-on workshop for our virtual user group. This is actually a repeat of a workshop we ran in December. Uh, it was quite popular, but due to the holidays, some people couldn't attend, so we're giving a, a second chance to attend that one. If you did attend, we would uh, ask that you recommend it to your colleagues who you think might benefit from that information and simply get in, in touch with your uh, sales rep or your customer success manager to reserve your seat there. So I thank you everybody for attending. We'll see you at the 23rd of February and then again at the 23rd of March. And this concludes our webinar for today. Thank you for attending.